In episode 1 of The Horror of Dolores Roach, Dolores' life has been adapted into a popular Broadway thriller in the present. Performer Flora Frias plays Dolores and delivers the final soliloquy. Following that, she receives a standing ovation. She talks about the challenging role she is playing, that of a cannibal and serial killer, backstage. The rest of the details are provided for us by a newspaper headline. After saying goodbye to her co-workers, who are gushing about the actress, Dolores greets Flora in person. The murderer speaks to the actress who plays her after becoming upset by this unexpected turn of incidents. Dolores feels bitter that she isn't making money off this business and wishes to finally clear the air by telling Flora the truth. We are transported back in time to the early 2000s, in Washington Heights. With Dominic, her drug dealer partner, Dolores is happier than she has ever been. The business they run is flourishing, and they are putting money aside for their eventual escape strategy. A short while later, Dolores is arrested following a drug raid. Dominic vanishes, leaving her to spend 16 years in jail for assaulting a police officer and possession with intention. The year is 2019, and Dolores has just been freed from jail. When she gets off the train, she discovers a completely altered New York City. Since the arrest, Dolores' old neighborhood has undergone gentrification, and she no longer recognizes it. Dolores returns to her former flat to discover that a young couple has moved there. Dolores sneaks into the apartment and checks her hidden tile in the bathroom, but it's empty. She understands that Dominic fled after stealing all of their money. She is enraged because that was her only chance to live outside the prison. She is lost while pacing the streets. She only recognizes one spot, Empanada Loca, a popular fast food joint. While she crosses the street in a hurry, she almost gets run over. The eatery is the same inside. This gives Dolores comfort, while she orders her favorite dish. The cashier refuses a $50 bill for the meal though. Dolores exits the store feeling defeated. A familiar face finds her as she leaves. We learn that currently, Luis Batista is in charge of the eatery. When Luis recognizes his old friend, he is overjoyed and gives her a meal for free in addition to a herb to smoke. They then descend the restaurant's basement stairs and enter his temporary residence. Dolores inquires regarding Dominic's whereabouts. Following the drug raid, Luis acknowledges that he did not see him again. He may have passed away or relocated according to rumors. Dolores tells Luis that she has no friends, family members, money, or somewhere to stay. Luis ends up offering the girl the basement space that used to belong to his deceased dad. Dolores is thrilled to have a place to stay. He gives her the space without charging rent. For her, it's an actual wish come true. Luis experiences a panic attack whilst talking and smoking. She gives him an unexpected back massage to help him relax. She then comes clean and says she had been the jail's masseuse. She later gets settled in her brand new room. While taking a shower, she thinks of her former cellmate Tabitha, whom she bitterly misses. The episode comes to a close in the present time. Dolores has started telling Flora about her entire life. We understand that there is still a lot to find out about her. In episode 2 of The Horror of Dolores Roach, the water occasionally cuts off but Dolores enjoys her time smoking joints while taking very long showers. When she informs Luis of the plumbing problem, he snaps and starts yelling at the landlord over the cell phone. We learn that despite owing his landlord a sizable debt, Luis is unwilling to pay. The proprietor of a nearby launderette, Joy, is then introduced to Dolores by Luis. He wants Joy to help Dolores find a job. Joy talks about her nine-year-old company and brings up Bridget's salon. When Dolores inquires about the beauty salon, she learns that they offer massage services. She requests an interview to become a massage therapist at Bridget's salon. Dolores offers Bridget a complimentary massage to display her deft touch. Her magical hands charm Bridget, who immediately offers her an entry-level position. Dolores is overjoyed, but her hopes are short-lived. Marcy, a client, spots Dolores inside the beauty salon. She enters the room and immediately brings up Dolores' imprisonment, her possession allegations as well as her 15-year sentence. Bridget instantly retracts the offer. Marcy and Dolores meet up outdoors. She counters with a better paying position. To be able to provide Dolores with the sales position, she deliberately destroyed the opportunity Dolores had. Dolores is curious and wants to know what she is offering. Further, Marcy claims to be a drug dealer. She discusses taking over Dominic's company but she is unsure of Dolores' ex-boyfriend's current whereabouts. Despite being tempted by the work offer, Dolores declines it in the hopes of starting over now that she has been released from prison. 
Nelly, the female cashier at Empanada Loca, suggests that they create a vision board that will help with the accomplishment of Dolores' goals. Luis learns of the strategies and Dolores' unsuccessful job interview. He then decides to advertise her massage therapy business on Windows. On Dolores' bed, a neighbor by the name of Caleb gets a relaxing massage. He enjoys it and even pays her a compliment for her expertise. Her abilities are getting around by word of mouth, and there is a queue of customers around the block for her services. Luis refuses to pay any rent, so Dolores counts her savings and makes an effort to cover her expenses. She appears encouraged and content with her accomplishments for once. Following that, she and Nelly restyle the space. Dolores accepts the co-worker's suggestion that she invest money into buying a massage table. Jeremiah, the delivery guy, aids her in moving and unpacking the brand new massage table. But he expresses his fears regarding Luis. He advises her that she needs to have backup plans because her business isn't going to survive for long. When the landlord, Gideon Pullman, arrives to talk about rent, Luis fights with him upstairs. Despite owing his landlord three months' worth of rent, Luis is refusing to pay. Dolores says she has money to pay off the landlord to defuse the conflict. To confidentially count the money, they descend to the basement. Dolores gives him $500, though the landlord, Mr. Pullman claims he is truly in need of $11,000 every month. Dolores is then shocked by this out-of-reach cost. Dolores proposes the cash as a down payment. According to the landlord, this will give them an additional week. She worries that this huge amount of rent will be impossible to pay. Consequently, she offers Mr. Proman a relaxing massage to persuade him otherwise. He consents to the complimentary massage because he believes he is going to get a sexual favor. But Dolores starts with the usual therapeutic massage. Mr. Proman continues to keep talking and soon exhibits a bit of unsettling behavior. She considers killing him, recalling Tabitha's lessons from jail on how to murder somebody from behind them. The landlord decides to take action, putting a hand on Dolores, because he is getting fed up with the massage. She decides to respond by attacking him. In episode 3 of the horror of Dolores Roach, Dolores first speaks with Flora in the present regarding her first murder. She comments on how difficult murder is and the way the first one fundamentally altered her life. We then return to the past timeline with Dolores attacking Gideon Pullman, Luis Landlord. On her brand new massage table, she chokes him. She genuinely begins to like it and lets the experience consume her. She eventually stops and acknowledges the damage she has done. Gideon Pullman has passed away. We understand that because she had no means to pay him back after being offended by his advances sexually, she felt that he had to die. After gathering herself, the massage therapist attempts to move his corpse, but she finds it too heavy to do so. The dead body then hits the ground. She wraps the corpse and retrieves her cash from his pants pockets. She leaves in an anxious state and runs to the nearby stores. She warns Luis not to enter the basement because his landlord is drifting off and the flight of stairs has collapsed as she goes away. Dolores picks up the necessary supplies at the hardware shop, including a shovel, a blade, garbage bags, tape, as well as liquid lye. Thereafter, she discovers that everything is being recorded on camera as she checks out. Following that, Dolores also purchases balloons and snacks while making up a party in order to confuse them. Dolores finds the landlord's corpses missing once she returns to the basement. She starts to feel paranoid and worries that Luis has reached out to the police or that she has made everything up. Following that, she discovers a letter from Luis wherein he promises to take care of the situation. She puffs on a joint and passes out on the mattress, completely overcome by the situation. After she awakens, she asks Luis about the corpse, but he refuses to talk. Outdoors, Nelly distributes complimentary samples of Luis' brand new empanadas, which include a brand new, top-secret ingredient, to the general public. Dolores thinks Mr. Pullman's body provided the new cuts of meat. She questions Luis regarding the thought. With his claims of developing a groundbreaking empanada style, he simply confesses to the offense. Luis steps down to his basement flat at the end of the workday. He smokes another joint in excitement as he is overjoyed by the reaction he received from customers. The carefree attitude of Luis horrifies Dolores. She confronts him regarding his cannibalistic strategy. He defends himself by describing the empanadas to be a delicacy. He thinks it's best for them to remain undetected. He continues by saying that his freezer contains the remainder of the corpse. We discover that he has, as a distraction, shifted Mr. Pullman's cell phone to Soho. Then he declares his love for Dolores and his belief that she feels the same way. She does not respond 
Instead, she puffs on a joint while attempting to block out the numerous problems that are now plaguing her. Life returns to normal over the following couple of days. The newly launched empanadas sell like hotcakes, and Dolores Massage Parlor is still doing well. She is content, but she worries that they will ultimately run out of human meat. Luis gives Dolores a gift as the episode comes to a close. For her, he has created a phony massage therapist certificate. This will give her business a more credible appearance. The normalcy gives both Luis and Dolores relief, except it going to change. Jonah, the landowner's kid, shows up a short while later with a few policemen and demands to find out where his dad is. In episode 4 of The Horror of Dolores Roach, when we pick up where we left off, it becomes apparent that both of the officers who are pursuing Luis are merely paying customers lining up outside the store. Jonah Perlman, the landowner's kid, has no odd fears either. He wishes to talk about the purchase and Luis' unpaid rent. When asked about negotiations with Gideon, Luis fabricates that they had just recently spoken. Jonah appears uncertain of these details, but he continues to believe what is said. Following that, Luis discusses Mr. Pullman's vacation. He even gives Jonah an empanada that's made using the meat of his own dad. Dolores confronts Luis after getting startled by his bizarre behavior. He points out his intention to remain undetected. She strikes back by setting the remainder of the empanadas on fire. Dolores decides to return to school to earn her degree because she needs to get away from Luis and is afraid of the things he might be capable of. She is in dire need of a new beginning and does not want to return to jail. She visits her previous school where she runs into a former classmate. Georgina Belliard, a distinguished professor who currently works at the university, is one of her old friends. Dolores is discovered strolling the hallways and requests details so she can apply. However, she is unable to talk with Georgina. Dolores runs into her faux Marcy back at the eatery. The drug dealer believes that Dolores has stolen her clients because of the long queues outside the shop's doors. Dolores attempts to convince Marcy to believe she has changed her ways and is now an established masseuse. She informs her that she no longer wants to sell illegal substances. She offers Marcy a therapeutic massage as an amicable gesture to disprove her. Dolores begins to massage Marcy inside the basement. Her adversary questions her regarding the company and the way she got started. She speaks of Tabitha, a handless masseuse who was her former cellmate and the person who showed her all of it. Following that, Dolores expresses her desire to get out of town for some quiet time. Marcy expresses admiration for her drive and offers to help her. Flustered by Marcy's remarks, she requests a short break. But when she comes out, Marcy is digging through her belongings. Marcy, who is insisting that Dolores runs an illegal drug operation, is after the substances. She seeks evidence that Dolores is deceiving her and stealing her clients. Marcy then begins hacking at Dolores' massage therapy table in an effort to find the substances, which she believes are concealed beneath the soft foam mattress. Dolores is devastated to see her table destroyed. Marcy describes how Dominic deliberately set up Dolores so she would take the fall. She continues by saying that numerous other women, including herself, had sex with Dominic. Marcy's malicious outburst has Dolores in a fit of rage. Due to Marcy's offensive remarks and the destruction of her table, Dolores loses her cool and strikes her. She kills Marcy by strangling her to death and then snapping her neck as well. While Dolores leaves the basement, she discovers Caleb interviewing Luis on his podcast. She suggests that she murdered another person when she tells Luis that there's a brand new delivery for him inside the basement. She gets nervous once more and leaves the murder scene. She knows she's headed back to jail, so makes her way there. She isn't turning herself inside, though. She wishes to catch up with her old cellmate. Tabitha receives updates from Dolores about her life outdoors. She discusses Louise's home and her massage therapy practice. Thereafter, Dolores makes a murderous illusion before turning to Tabitha for assistance in finding Dominic. Dolores is devastated that Dominic would take advantage of her and wishes to avenge his betrayal by killing him. Thank you for joining us on this journey. And I hope you enjoyed the horror of Dolores Roach Part 1.